Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to guide you step by step in my process of creating unique looking rice paper beads. I only occasionally include beads in my jewelry creations, but when I do add beads to my pieces, I like to have total control over the design process and coordinate the colors of the beads with the colors of the pieces. Therefore, making my own beads is a wonderful solution. The beads that you see here have all been formed out of rice paper. Then I stained the rice paper with watercolor. I didn't brush the watercolor on. I floated on and allowed the colors to intermix on their own. Sort of like what you see happening in this pendant, actually, or, or I should say necklace. I don't blend the colors with my brush. I splatter my colors and allow them to interact and mix on their own. It creates a very natural organic look that I like. Before I demonstrate how to make the actual beads, I'd like to briefly introduce the tools and materials that we'll be using to construct the beads. The tools we need to create the rice paper beads aren't many. All we need is an exacto knife, a ruler, I do all my cutting on a self-healing cutting board. I use a high quality glue, Jade 7-Eleven, or you could use uh, Lineco Neutral pH, excellent glue. Toothpicks to roll the paper on. Another material, this is not a must, but this is what I do, it's disclosing wax. I really like this material. So stick your toothpick in there and then rub the this closing wax into the toothpick. This guarantees that when you varnish the bead, it will not stick to the toothpick when it's time to remove it. Other waxes can also be used. You don't have to buy this expensive disclosing wax. Candle wax should work just as well, or beeswax for that matter. After the rice paper bead has been formed on the toothpick by rolling it, and you can see this one hasn't been painted yet, these have been painted up, you need to hold it upright. And this is my solution, a piece of wood with holes drilled in it. You can also use a piece of styrofoam. And of course, you'll need rice paper. And I like this translucent, thin rice paper with the filaments. Beautiful paper. To paint the beads, I use watercolor paint. I stain it with the watercolor paint. It sucks right into the rice paper, creating beautiful opalescent watercolor effects. I apply the paint usually with a number six round watercolor brush. So what do I do? First I determine how wide and long I want my bead. For example, in this project, I wanted the beads to fit just about the way you see them. I measured the space, the interior space where the bead will go, and it's just about three quarters of an inch. So I decided to make my beads a little bit more than a half inch. And I determined that in order to get that thickness bead, or diameter bead, it was necessary to cut strips about seven and a half inches long. So the strips I'm about to cut are seven and a half inches long by one half inch wide. That's all I need right now. Now for the fun part. To roll the paper onto the toothpick, I place it like you see it. Get it started, pressing down very carefully. Roll it up. There we go. The advantage of making the bead out of the rice paper is it results in a a bead that has wonderful 
when stained with watercolor, it has wonderful color qualities. A slight opalescent look to the beads that I really like. And they have a very nice organic feel to them. And when I get to the end of the paper, I'll place simply a dot of glue right there at the end, and then continue to roll it. Press down. Now we're ready to apply the paint, the watercolor paint. First thing I do is dampen the rice paper with some clean water. Then I go to my watercolor paint, and in it you see sort of a gold, sparkly quality. I added some micaceous pigment. There we go. It's nice stuff. It gives the paint a pearlescent quality. Then I brush it on. And I don't want it to be covered too heavily with paint. I want it to vary from blue, little gold sparkles to the white of the paper. I will put a little extra on the top and on the bottom. And it's often nice to throw in a little cerulean, which is a much more opaque blue. Establishes a little contrast. Of course, I could I can make the bead multicolor. You can do anything you want. Nice. Leave it alone. Let it blend on its own. Stick it back in the gadget so it dries. Now that the rice paper beads have been painted, it's time to apply the first coat of varnish. What I do is use a dilute mixture. Why? Because the rice paper is extremely absorbent and the dilute mixture will suck right into the paper. And that's what I want. The rice paper becomes saturated with the varnish. And the rice paper, when the varnish is completely dry, is transformed into a hard material that's waterproof. I apply a few layers of varnish, not just one. Time to let that dry. Remember early on, I coated the toothpicks with the disclosing wax. That'll effectively prevent the varnish from gluing the rice paper beads to the toothpick, so we will be able to slide everything off when the varnish has been allowed to completely dry. It's been a few hours since I coated the rice paper beads with varnish, and the varnish is completely dry. Keep in mind that the varnish I applied was diluted with 50% water. So it permeated the rice paper and thoroughly saturated it. The rice paper beads now will easily slide off the toothpicks. But I'm not finished with the 50% solution of varnish. What I also like to do is apply varnish to the inside of the bead and let it suck in. This guarantees that the rice paper is completely saturated with varnish. And I'll usually poke through after a couple of minutes of sitting there with a heavy piece of nylon fishing line. Just to make sure that the holes are open and not going to clog up with varnish. 
not finished. The outsides have been coated with dilute varnish. Now the insides have been saturated with dilute varnish. I've made sure the holes, look, you can even see it, are still open. Good. I'm going to let it dry. Come back later. Then I'll coat the outside of each one with undilute polycrylic varnish. The beads that you see here were made with this fibrous rice paper. See the little embedded fibers? Beautiful paper. Another type of rice paper that I use, maybe even more often than that, to make rice paper beads is the type without the fibers. This type of rice paper is easier to work with than the type with the fibers. Sometimes the fibers present cutting problems when you're cutting the blank pieces that will be rolled to create the beads. Let me use the rice paper without the fibers to make a few of these beads with an, a taper, thin at the top, wide at the bottom. I have a sheet of that rice paper that's been cut from a very large sheet to approximately 8 by 11. Before I cut, this is the pattern I'm going to use. When I cut out each individual triangle, at the base of the triangle, I leave this rectangular area that's where I start rolling. It gives the bead extra strength. And then I'll cut out this form. To prepare the rice paper for cutting, the first thing I'm going to do is mark off a half inch border on the ends. So I I did it on the top side already. Let me do it on the bottom side. Now I'm indicating the one inch marks along the line that I just drew. Okay. And I will do the same on the other side. Having done that, now I will proceed to connect the points and divide my paper into one inch rows. The next thing to draw is the angles, the wedges that I will cut out. Stop there because that now becomes the base for the bead. And I simply work my way up. I need to cut the strips. And I always use, although this is pretty sharp, I hardly use it, but I prefer to put on a new blade and use the sharpest blade possible because a dull blade will tear the paper. Light, even pressure. For the rolling stage, I always have a piece of paper towel on the side, ready to go. I'll use the, this closing wax to lightly coat the toothpicks. This guarantees nothing will stick. It's wonderful stuff. I use a self-healing cutting board to do my rolling on because I'm able to keep everything lined up nicely as I roll the bead forward. 
Now the first thing I'll do is take my toothpick and begin. As we approach the very tip, this is when I apply a dot of my glue. Ooh, that's a big dot. And then I continue. I press it a bit, and then I continue. I wipe it up with the paper, and that's it. Once again, I'm ready for the dot of glue. See how little glue I use. You just want to be able to lock the end in place. It's not going to unravel from the stick. All you need is a dot of glue. We'll let these dry. One more thing that you might want to consider, and that is regular tissue wrapping paper. Wonderfully translucent. Here are some beads that I'm making. They're still a little wet from the watercolor. The watercolor hasn't dried yet, but not bad. Let's apply some varnish. I should wait longer, but I'm impatient. A nice looking bead. We'll let it dry. If you're having a problem finding the rice paper, why not use white tissue paper? It takes watercolor well. Having mounted the beads that have been varnished on the inside and the out with dilute varnish, I continue to apply undilute varnish with a flat brush, or in this case it's an angled brush. I work it. Every so often, I can check on them as they're drying and give them a spin. This prevents them from sticking to the nylon cord. Also, as you know, if you watch my other videos, that I like to heat my varnished work. I varnish it with polycrylic clear gloss varnish. And I've learned that by heating it at a relatively low temperature, 150 degrees, in a preheated toaster oven for about 20 minutes or so, it significantly hardens or makes the varnish harder than it would normally be if you let it air dry. And this is an attribute that is good for the jewelry. A nice hard surface is very desirable. A tip in regard to making beads. I save all my bead templates as JPEG files, image files on my computer. I draw them out once and then I save them. This way I could print out a template and then there's no need to redraw it. I simply place it on my small light box. I'll turn it on. There we go. And trace the template onto the rice paper. And that's what, that's what I've been doing over here. Storing your images on a computer, your templates that you've drawn, has a lot of advantages. Primarily, you don't have to redraw it, which can take a bit of time. Although tracing does take a little bit of time too, but it's no big deal. You can experiment with printing directly onto your rice paper, but I, I think that might be tricky. The other advantage is the size of the template can be easily adjusted in your computer and printed either smaller or larger, dependent on the needs of the particular bead you're creating. So it gives you a lot of flexibility.
if you intend to make rice paper beads or tissue paper beads, I recommend building a library of templates that you can print out and trace onto your rice paper using a light box. It makes the job go a lot quicker. I hope you enjoyed watching my demonstration on how to make your own rice paper beads. Thanks for watching.